Fast and sideways, that's what I love. Who doesn't love that, right? Well, there's lots of aspects that come into making a car go fast, go sideways, or handle as best as they can. And one of them is coilovers. So we're gonna talk about those today. I've got a coilover in front of me here. You may have heard that term before. And it is simply talking about the shock and spring combination that's on your vehicle. So please don't call them coils, first of all. They are coilovers. And what it's specifying is the coil spring is over the shock body. So you, some cars have a separate setup where the coil spring is separate or independent of the shock. And that's just a different way of doing things. It still kind of achieves the same results. So each of these has a specific role in the car suspension. Let's talk about how each of them come together and form a coilover. Let's start with the spring. So the spring here basically has one job. It holds up the weight of the vehicle and it allows the suspension to move up and down without coming into contact with the body of the car. And you have a couple different things that you can use to tune the spring. You have the length of the spring, you have the diameter, and mostly you have the spring rate. So the spring rate is how stiff the spring is. And the higher the spring rate, the more it resists compression based on weight in order to squeeze this together. So on my car currently I have an 8K spring rate. I'm upgrading to a 14K spring rate and I'll talk about that in just a little bit of why I'm doing that. Now let's talk about the shock. This is a BC Racing BR type shock. This is a very simple, basic shock body. It's a fantastic, easy to use, beginner friendly shock. It has one adjustment knob and that adjustment knob is going to both adjust the compression and rebound at the same time. So as you tighten the knob up, you are stiffening the shock and you are basically making it where it has a higher resistance to moving, compressing, and rebounding. If you loosen it, then you are going to take away a bit of that resistance so you make it a little bit softer and you make it oscillate or compress and rebound easier in the suspension. So this is what I was running, the BR type, but now I've upgraded to the ER type. So the difference between the two my ERs are now two-way adjustable. So what that means is I now have independent control of the compression and the rebound. So I can control how quickly or how softly this will compress separately from how quickly the shock returns back to its static state. This is done by having two different knobs, of course. You'll see on here, this is a remote mounted canister. So this does a couple things. It gives me an extra knob to adjust that compression. It also is going to hold more fluid, which is going to help mitigate some of the heat that's generated inside of the shock body itself and allow it to have better control for a longer period of time. Now with all BC coilovers, they have a independent ride height adjustment from the spring compression. So you don't have to compress the spring. If you want to raise or lower the car, you can set your preload completely independently from the ride height, which is really cool. So another couple things that are nice about this setup here is what's called a helper spring. You notice this little spring right here. It is a smaller spring that allows for droop travels. So let's, let's think about it like this. The suspension has a certain ride height. So when the weight of the vehicle is on the suspension, it compresses just a bit and it's static or sitting still at that particular ride height, whatever you have adjusted. Now, as you turn the wheel and hit the brakes and accelerate, the suspension is moving all around as this, the road falls away or you hit bumps. It is doing its job to soak up all of those undulations or differences in the road surface. And one of those things it's gotta do is obviously lower or go below um, or drop out from underneath you. Now, normally, you know, it only has so much travel before it bottoms out completely and stops. And if that happens and the road falls away even more, then you have a gap in between the tire and the road. So you have absolutely no control because the tire is not touching the ground. So this right here is called a helper spring. And what it does is it allows you to have a little more travel for the coilover to completely decompress or lengthen as the road falls away underneath you. However, whenever you let the weight of the vehicle come back, it is not going to affect your spring rate. So it completely compresses whenever your car is at a static ride height. 
and it does not affect the spring rate of actual spring, which is just above it. The spring rate I have currently on the car is an 8K. Um, I don't know how many inch pounds that is off the top of my head, but I think it's somewhere around 400. So this is gonna be in the drift world, kind of a softer spring rate. It is great for like if you had an SR car with not a lot of weight in the front and you didn't have a whole lot of tire or grip. So you were just trying to have the car nice and tossable and handle well. <sighs> Damn, this is bad. Yeah. So nice and tossable and handle pretty good. This is my new spring. So the difference between the old spring and the new spring is the spring rate. BC does a great job of labeling their springs here. You've got three different numbers, 62, 180, and 014. So you've got the length, the diameter, and then the spring rate itself. So 014 is signifying 14K. So it's kilograms per millimeter. How many kilograms will compress it a millimeter? So the old ones are gonna be an 8K. They're a little bit softer in terms of drifting, especially with my car, which has a 2J in the front. It's a little bit heavier than normal, and it is a more competitive car. So I'm trying to get a lot of weight to transfer to the rear. So that's one of the things that this higher spring rate is gonna do. It's going to allow the car to be a little bit sharper on steering because now I have a little, or a lot stiffer really up front. And also when I'm hitting the brakes, it's gonna reduce the amount of nose dive, okay? But what, more importantly, when I get on the gas, it's gonna help push that weight to the rear because now there's a greater differential between the front and rear spring rate. So, you know, the spring rate is, kind of arbitrary in terms of just a number. It's more about the balance front to rear, okay? It's all about balance. You've heard me talk about that before. So the rear spring rate I run is currently a 6K. Uh, I could even go down to a 5K or a 4K if I wanted to, but depending on your setup, the type of tires you run and your driving style, you may or may not want to do that. So for me, I've actually been advised by people that are smarter than me, Chelsea, Denofa, and Matt Field both have given me advice to go to a higher spring rate. They've learned a lot. They have pro engineers on their teams that know way more than me. So I definitely have taken their advice and I listen to what they say and I'm gonna try it out. I've never tried upping the spring rate on my car. And in this case, I'm nearly doubling it. So I'm really curious as to how it's gonna drive differently. A lot of this is about the progression of the sport and the progression of my car. You know, as my driving skills develop and my car develops, I want to make sure I stay ahead of the power curve. And if someone's going to give me some great advice, like changing my car setup, I'm game for trying it. So that's what we're doing today. I'm going to swap these springs out. I'll show you the easy way to do that real quick. It's kind of cheating. It may not be the safest way. I don't know, but it's the way I'm going to do it so I can get it done as quick as I can and get the car back on the road, quick check on the alignment. And then we're gonna go testing this weekend at Club Loose in San Antonio to give it a final shakedown, make sure I like it, any final adjustments I need to make, I can. And then I'll be ready for the Lone Star competition in round five coming up in two weeks in Houston. All right, first step is I'm gonna take off the adjuster. It's real simple, you just unscrew this little gold ring right here. Once you get it completely undone, you just pull straight up, don't lose this. And then I'm gonna do it the easy way. So you wanna make sure there's no preload in your spring. And the way to check that you don't have any preload is just make sure you grab your spring here and give it a twist. There should be no resistance or anything like that. And the reason why is because I'm about to take off the shock from the top hat. And this whole assembly is going to be free from the top hat. And if it were to be under compression, then it would shoot down or you would have potentially bad things happen. So don't do that. All you gotta do is put a 19 millimeter here. Loosen it up. There you go. So now this right here is the top of the shock and I've got the nut loose that was holding it to the top hat. So now once I do the other side, the sway bar will relax and allow them both to drop down and then I'll be able to just pivot it out of the way, pop the spring on and off and then put it back together. I'm guessing the sway bar is why I can't do this right now. Damn. God damn it. Yeah, it's because of the, I know why. Let's see if this will work. I don't know if it will. So well, the easy way didn't work because I have other 
stupid problems with my suspension. So I get to do it the fun way, which is takes more work with a hammer. Cool, almost punched me in the face. All right, so now we've got that off. Take the top hat off, and you have this little spring perch. Make sure you keep it all together. It is multiple pieces with a bearing. And now we've got the spring itself. So the spring comes off. Now's a good time to inspect everything. If you wanna take a look at what's going on in here, You got the, what's this thing called? Bump stop, I think, yeah. Look in here, make sure there's no tears in the seal, make sure there's no excess dirt you need to clean out. These look super clean. That's what this, this is just a dust boot. It's just intended to keep everything as clean as possible, keep the dirt out. So get that back on. Make sure you put your new spring on, not, not the old one. All right. Now the top hat, or sorry, the spring perch. You notice it's got a little plastic ring in here. You can kind of inspect that. This is where that bearing is. You wanna make sure you feel that bearing and you feel that it's not crunchy or got any kind of weird play. So put that back together. That goes back on here, just like that. And then you put your top hat, same thing. Bearing right here. This is gonna not spin or twist. It's supposed to be tight. So if it's not tight, then you have problems if you have play in there. Just inspect it all. It all looks good. Top nut right here. Put it back on. The fun part where you probably wish you had gone to the gym. I'm sure there's a torque spec for this, but I'm not gonna look it up. I'm gonna give it a German torque spec. Guten tight. One side's done. Now do all the rest of that again on the other side and try not to get hit in the face. Oh, all right. So we finished both sides. I hate working on cars. Let's go drive. <laughs> Texas today out in San Antonio. This is my chance to give the car a quick shakedown after the new springs I just put on. I'm gonna hopefully feel a difference here and get a little bit more drive out of the corners. Either way, I'm gonna have a good time and that's really what this is all about. Let's go.
right, just finished shakedown. I finally felt the difference. I have kept talking about how I have the worst butt dyno ever. What I mean by that is that it's hard for me to tell small changes or even in this case, larger setup changes uh, because I'm so used to kind of just driving around problems with the car. So normally if the car, if I turn the wheel this way and this doesn't happen, then I just, okay, turn it more. If I hit the gas and it doesn't step out, okay, just clutch kick and just kind of adjusting to make the car do what I'd like it to. Well, as a driver, I need to learn how to read setup changes a little better, a lot better, really. So that's why I mean when I say my butt dyno is not the best. I mean, I can't really tell because I'm so used to driving around problems in the car. It was hard for me to be honest to really tell what was going on there. It was hard for me to kind of pick up on the little changes. Even though it was a massive change in spring rate, um, it made a little bit sharper turning, I felt like, and a little less brake nosedive, but not a lot. Not enough to where I was like, wow, I just made a big difference. And I couldn't really feel the drive out of the corner like I was looking for. So uh, I chat with Chelsea a bit more. He said, you know, change the compression and pull the rear sway bar on the, on the back end. So that's what I did. I pulled the rear sway bar. I put the compression all the way to zero, which is how uh, much resistance it has to squat, basically. So now it's full squat and a um, medium rebound. And I actually felt that. So I'm finally like, yes, I felt some sort of setup change. The car digs into the corner now better for sure. It requires more throttle, a little more clutch work to get it to you know, come out and stay maintaining drift. So overall, I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm still working on my butt dyno, still getting a little better with that. And you know, other than that, I just, <laughs> I'm happy that the car is still together and everything's working. So I'm gonna stop driving. It is super hot, I'm gonna pack it up. So overall, definitely happy with the changes. Thank you, Chelsea and Matt and all the boys at BC for helping me with the car and getting it all figured out. I feel like this is definitely some valuable information to take home and get ready for round five. I've got some cleaning up to do, a little bit of tweaks to make and a couple things to fix, and we'll see you there.